Hi families, uh, this is Mrs. Peters, and I thought I would try and get you caught up a little bit on what we're doing in math these days. So we started two, which is an introduction to multiplication, um, about a week ago. I don't know, it's all kind of runs together. Um, it is, like I said, our second unit following our focus on addition and subtraction. Um, I want you to know though, one of the things that I really like about our curriculum is how it builds on ideas. And so we actually truly introduced multiplication back in September with an activity that's um, a really critical component of Bridges, which is our um, calendar grid. And so every day or the days that we could, um, we would look at uh, turn over a calendar card that was a model for multiplication. So we actually spent, um, like I said, a fair amount of time talking about it in even in September. So um, a couple of things that are really important is that as we introduce multiplication, we want to make sure kids understand uh, kind of what that operation means. And so the language that we use, and there's a couple of examples here with these. If you look at day nine, um, we would say there were three groups and there were three in each group. So we could say three groups of three is nine. And then we can write that as a multiplication sentence, three times three equals nine. So we really are um, supporting kids to understand that multiplication sign or times really can be read as groups of. So that's three groups of three equals nine. In the array model, We'll say, well, there's three rows and there's four squares in each row. So that's three groups of four is 12. And we can write that as three times four equals 12. So as we started unit two, we started looking at different contexts. And the first one we looked at was um, a picture of a pet store because of course everything needs to be orderly and in nice neat rows. Um, and we talk about how multiplication tells us how many when we have many groups of the same size and we don't want to count them all. And so that's kind of how we introduced that. So we looked at these different um, items and tried to figure out how many without counting them all. From there, we moved to a context of stamps. So you've probably seen your child uh, working with these types of problems where they're trying to figure out how much a set of stamps cost. Um, we have this great resource that the publisher has put out, so I can display these in our Zoom sessions, and we just talk about different ways that we could figure that out. So in this case, um, you know, a student figured out, well, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, and there's two groups of ten, so I added the tens and got twenty. And really, it's all about, and and if you've been looking at your child's work, it's really all about finding equal groups. So if I can make equal groups and I can then join those equal groups. So from there, we went to uh, Watertown's windows and Lolly the window washer. And again, we're trying to figure out how many panes are in those windows without counting by thinking about, well, how many rows are there and how many are in each row? So we've done some work and I borrowed a uh, work from Amelia. I hope she doesn't mind. Um, so when we would say, well, how many windows are in this pane and, and reminding them, you know, don't, we don't want to count them all. So what Amelia did is found um, equal groups um, going vertically, found that there were three groups of five and added five and five and five is 15. And then for this particular window, she uh, made groups of four of going the other direction, four times four um, equals 16 panes. And you can see her strategy there was to combine fours and combine fours and then combine those eights. So um, anyway, that was good work by Amelia. I wanna give you a tip. Um, there is an extra challenge problem coming up. I think I'm going to assign it on Tuesday, which would be, gosh, if you're not listening to this right away, it would be November 8th or 9th. Um, and students will be asked, they'll be given a pretty large window and they're going to be asked to try and figure out how many. So what we're hoping, and we don't really have enough time to spend on it, but if you want to, if, if you see this and you want to encourage your child to try it, trying to get them to think about how they can break that larger array into smaller arrays. This happens to just be one way that they could do that. But there are uh, several. 
So anyway, that is our uh, focus right now. I just wanted to remind you um, that there is a really good resource put out by Math Learning Center, which is the publisher of our math curriculum. I, think I mentioned it in a video not long ago called Math at Home. So they have a set of activities now related to multiplication, which are just really interesting and fun. In fact, as I looked at it tonight, I'm thinking, well, I really want to take out some of those activities and discuss them. Um, with my students. So if you're looking for ways to um, kind of expand your child's uh, resources and extend their learning, that's a great one. And I will uh, make sure that you have the link. So if you have any questions, of course, make sure that you um, reach out to me and ask. And um, thank you for all of your support.